What's up, guys? It's Chris. Here to give some post fight thoughts on UFC 130. Honestly, I contemplated whether or not even to do this video just because I kind of wondered how much feedback I'll get on it. Um, you know, obviously, that's what you do in videos. You want to talk to other fans about the fights, get feedback, you know, see what other people are thinking, and, you know, kind of go back and forth discussing it. And I don't know how many people are actually looking forward to this event. I wasn't, particularly because of the main event. Um, and afterwards, it kind of had that feeling. You know, I felt like I was kind of right in my assessment before the event. Um, that said, it, it did start off pretty pretty good. You know, the first half of the event was was better than expected. You know, it's one of the ones where I said low expectations sometimes are easy to exceed, and the events turn out better than uh, than what you would assume they're going to. And that was the case leading up up until the main event and the co-main event, which really were a bit of a letdown in my opinion. But also, I can't say they're huge letdowns because they somewhat were what you expected. You know, they weren't anything special. Um, that said, as far as the undercard goes, the fights are on uh, Facebook and stuff. Um, I guess the one that stood out was, uh, actually on the Facebook fights, nothing too great. You know, um, good fights, nothing bad. But of the um, prelim bouts, the one that stood out was Miguel Torres, Demetrius Johnson on Spike TV. That was a really good fight. Um, really fast-paced, action-packed fight, which consisted mainly on the ground. You know, you don't see a lot of uh, exciting ground battles nowadays that often in mixed martial arts. And I thought this definitely fit the bill. Um, in my opinion, I thought it was the best fight of the night for myself personally as a fan. I I think the decision was questionable. I actually thought Miguel Torres did enough to earn it, but they gave it to Demetrius. I was just surprised that none of the judges gave it to Miguel Torres, that it was unanimous for Demetrius Johnson. But either way, it's a very good win for Demetrius Johnson in moving forward in the bantamweight division. And even in losing, I don't think it's that big of a setback for Miguel Torres. Because he fought a very good tactical battle, and I do think that he could have um, been awarded the decision, and it wouldn't have been a robbery at all. As far as the main card, Brian San Jorge Santiago, <laughs> you know, it was either going to be Santiago by submission, most likely, or stand by knockout, and of course it was stand by knockout. Not a big surprise here. Um, Stan just looked, you know, he looks solid. He looks improved. He's definitely improving his his technique. I think he's a little bit faster at 185 and um, training with Greg Jackson's camp. You definitely see a more developed fighter than what you saw in his time in the WEC. So a good win for Stan. And it's unfortunate, in my opinion, that the UFC already announced Mayhem Miller versus Michael Bisman on the Ultimate Fighter for the next season as coaches. I think if they would have waited for this fight, I think Brian Stan versus Michael Bisman would have been a much better coaching matchup. I think... Uh, the storylines would have been a lot better, you know, and Michael Bisping is a great antagonist, and um, I think being matched up against All-American Brian Stan, that would have made for a good dynamic. Not to say Mayhem Miller won't make for a good coach as well, but I just think the storylines of the U.S. versus uh, Bisping would have been a, a very interesting. I think it would have been even more, um, possibly better ratings, but we'll see. Uh, next up, you had Rick Story, Thiago Alves. Rick Story called out Thiago Alves. He wanted him, and they showed why. You know, uh, Rick Story put it on him, took the fight to him, particularly in the first couple of rounds. You know, implemented his game plan, tried to break the will of Thiago Alves. Thiago Alves came in great shape. You know, normally not, um, not only does he not have trouble making weight, but Thiago Alves puts in a lot of weight, puts on a lot of extra weight between the weigh-in and the fight. And he wasn't, like, hugely bulked up like he normally is, so you could tell that the Dolce diet worked for him. Plus, he had stamina late in the fight, you know. Um, Rick Story, I thought, clearly won the first couple of rounds with his wrestling, out-muscling Thiago Alves, but not afraid to mix it up with the strikes here and there as well. Mm -hmm. um, he showed a hell of a good chin. Third round, I was surprised that Rick Story was the fighter that gassed out, because normally Thiago Alves, especially when he's not having things go his way in the first couple of rounds, is the fighter that will get tired as the fight goes on. But Rick Story was actually much more fatigued in the third. Thiago Alves, like I said, showed that he was in great shape by um, being a fresher fighter that had more to offer in the third round. And you got to give credit to Rick Story for having a hell of a chin because Taco Alves laced him with quite a few hard shots, including a knee and some solid punches, but Rick Story took him quite well and was able to, I don't want to say survive, but was able to make it through the 15 minutes in a, a fight that he was definitely fading as uh, it was going on. You know, that third round was all Tiago Alves for the most part. But um, Rick Story gets a win, definitely the biggest win of his career, and a big step for him in the welterweight division. As for Thiago Alves, um, you know, I, I really wanted Story to win this fight because I thought 
Alves, I didn't want to see him challenge GSP and he'd get anytime soon. So Chicago Vets can still mix it up at the top of the division with any of the, the you know, top 10 guys out there. But, um, you know, for him, it's, it's, it's a bit of a disappointing loss for him. Travis Brown, Stephon Strew, not a whole to say about this fight. Travis Brown gets a win by KO. Um, Strew, uh, you know, wins fight, loses fight. Kind of reminds me of Kendall Grove in that, in that manner. He wins a fight and he loses a fight, but it's always uh, usually entertaining to watch. More so entertaining than Kendall Grove, I guess, in that manner. But um, good win for Travis Brown, a guy that's uh, quote-unquote in the mix in the UFC heavyweight division moving forward. Frank Mir, Roy Nelson. Um, my prediction for this fight, I thought Roy would be in better shape. I thought he would have the better cardio. I thought he'd be the better wrestler. I thought he might have the better ground game. I was wrong on all three. Frank Mir dominated this fight. Better shape, better conditioning, better striking, better wrestling. Dominated the ground game, dominated the entire fight. Roy Nelson just looked terrible. Frank Mir was one step ahead the entire fight. Did some nice... uh had some nice knees in the clinch. Both to the head and the body. I was surprised how he was how how easily he was able to manhandle Roy Nelson. Um, both retired late, but Roy Nelson was never really in this fight. Threw that big overhand right occasionally, never really landed it with much effect. And uh, yeah, um, Roy Nelson really needs to just cut some weight. Let's be honest, he needs to get in better conditioning because this fight showed that um, at the you know even. The shape he's in now just isn't enough to cut at the top of the, of the UFC heavyweight division. Good win for Frank. And a bad loss for Roy. Main event. Rampage, uh, as expected, gets an easy win over Matt Hamill. I don't have a whole lot to say about this fight. Um, but when is expected, all I thought Rampage would be able to stop Hamill. Rampage said he had uh, a hand fracture coming in this fight, so he wasn't able to. But I guess the one thing that stood out to me in this fight is... Um, Aside from the fact that Matt Hamill had, could not get Rampage acting down, although that wasn't a surprise, is that Rampage is very uh, flat-footed. Very, um, it's almost like his feet are in cement. You know, he just is moving. He's not, he doesn't ever bounce. You see a lot of fighters bouncing on their toes. Rampage doesn't do that. He just plods forward. And I think that is something he needs to work on. Because that's one of the reasons why he wasn't able to really catch Hamill and finish him off, in my opinion. And it's a big reason why I think if he fights John Jones next, he has zero. He has a very small chance of winning the fight. He's just too slow and too plodding at this stage of his career, and he doesn't look to resort to his wrestling. You know, in the past, Rampage, mostly in the Pride, would use his wrestling to take guys down and dominate them with a superior top position. You know, look at the second fight against Vanderlei Silva. In the first round, where he took Silva down. He was able to do some really solid ground and pound. Look at the fight against Chuck Liddell, the first fight in Pride. He absolutely kicked Chuck's ass on the ground, stopped him from top position. Rampage doesn't do that anymore. He's just content to box. Rampage, I think, should really get back to some of his wrestling. I think if he took Matt Hamill down, he would have really been able to um, put the hurt on Matt Hamill from top. But he just doesn't do that anymore. He just looks to kind of box. But I just think he's too stiff, and he just doesn't move enough. Um, he's just a plotter at this point. You know, like I said, I'm thinking John Jones against a much faster, quicker, lengthier John Jones. He's really going to um, have a lot of trouble if that fight materializes next. Either way, though, solid win for Rampage. Bad loss for Matt. Disappointing fight. It was lackluster. It wasn't, uh, I'm not completely surprised by the way it played out, but, you know, I don't regret not ordering this pay-per-view by any means. I felt very content in the fact that I didn't order this pay-per-view because the main event wasn't that exciting as I didn't expect it to be, nor did a lot of fans from what I was reading beforehand. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. I'll be talking about this event as well as um, looking forward to next weekend's Ultimate Fighter finale on Science Pass Radio Show, which will be coming up shortly. Or if you're not watching this uh, beforehand, you can always catch it on podcast or on demand later. Um, so be sure to check that out if you can. I'll put a link to the information link to the show and the information for the video. As well as link to my Twitter and link to scienceadvice.com. Like to hear your thoughts. Like to hear your guys' thoughts on the show. Um, did you watch it? Did you order it? If not, you regret it. If you did order it, you regret ordering it. Um, or if you didn't, you regret not ordering it. What was your favorite fight of the night? 
What did you think on the Miguel Torres Demetrius Johnson? Who do you think won that fight? And um, do you think Rampage, if he fights John Jones next, can win the fight? Or do you think John Jones wins that fight fairly easily like I do? That's for now, guys. Till next time, I'm out.